This video is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Vegetarian Zombie from Learn, Create, Play with a new episode about learning C-sharp with Unity. This is a course that aims to teach you the C-sharp language, even if you have zero programming experience. If you find this video useful, please give it a like. And if you are interested in this course and other courses on Unity development, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, if you've been following this course from the beginning, you've learned about creating variables to store data, and then how to use operators to change that data. In the last couple of episodes, you've even learned how to use comparison and logical operators to produce true and false values. So that's great. We can create a variable that stores the number of points in our space game. We increase the amount every time the player shoots an asteroid. If the player reaches a thousand points, we give them an extra life. How do we do this? Welcome to control flow, and more specifically, if statements. If statements are a huge part of writing code. Oftentimes, we need to make choices. Take this fun little flowchart. Each decision point asks a question, and that question leads to a possibly different control flow. When we write an if statement, we define those decision points and direct the code flow. Each decision point can be represented by an if statement, except this chart asks yes or no questions. With if statements, we use true and false. Let's break it down. This is a basic if statement. We start with the keyword if, then we provide the condition. The condition goes in a pair of parentheses. This condition must result in either a true or false value. So how does this work? If the condition results in a true value, all the code inside the curly braces will be evaluated. If it is false, the code simply jumps over the curly braces and continues onward. A good way to provide a true or false value is with comparison and logical operators. If those don't sound familiar, see the previous two episodes. Both comparison and logical operators evaluate to true or false, so this is how you would format a question about reaching a thousand points. If the points is greater than or equal to 1000, the player lives variable is increased by one. A quick little tangent about braces. You'll often see them formatted like this. The result is the same. Since we are using Unity style guide, we are keeping the braces on their own line. Believe it or not, you can place an if statement inside another if statement. This is called nesting and it's pretty common. Sometimes we want to check a whole range of values, so we use an else if like the following. In this case, the first condition is evaluated. If it is false, the control flow jumps to the else if condition. If it is true, all the code in the else if braces are evaluated. Otherwise, the code jumps over the braces. You can add lots of else if statements. You can also provide a default else statement. There can only be one of these. If none of the conditions evaluate to true, then the else block is evaluated. Just one quick thing. You'll sometimes see one-liner if blocks like this, or like this. Notice there are no curly braces. When you have one line of code, you can omit the braces. Personally, I find this to be a bad idea. Let's say you wanted to increase the Y value if the condition is true, so you might accidentally do this. Yet now the Y condition is being evaluated whether the condition is true or not. Or take this if statement. Here we are incrementing the X if the condition is true and always incrementing the Y. But if you comment out the X line, then the compiler assumes that the next line of code is part of the if block. So here the Y will increment when the condition is true. The compiler ignores all spacing and indents. So I always use curly braces. It may be verbose, but it eliminates some potential bugs from my code. Let's put our if statements to test, but before we do that, here's a message from my sponsor, Kadeco.com. Kadeco is a site for developers made by developers. With hundreds of instructors from around the world, you can learn about topics such as native iOS development, native Android development, and even multi-platform development with Flutter. Kadeco also features hundreds of free articles, including topics on game development covering both Unity and Unreal. As a pro subscriber, you can access a library of thousands of videos on a range of development topics. The curated learning paths are designed to teach the basics of development in a friendly and supportive way. Pro subscribers also have complete access to all the books at Kadeco, 
such as the Unity Apprentice, that aims to teach you Unity by creating a series of different games. Get started on your programming journey today by heading on over to Kadeco.com. To get started, open your project in progress. Create a new script called Number Guesser. This script will have the player guess a number between 1 and 10. Attach the script to the text. Remove any past script. Good, now the fun part. Open the script in your code editor. First, let's set up the script to use our text in button. Now head back to Unity. Configure the button to use our script, as we've done in past episodes. Use the check guess method. Good. Switch back to your code editor. Now let's declare two variables, one for the guess and one for the random number. You'd think we'd leave the random number private, but by keeping it public, we can test our logic. Now let's prompt the user. In start, add the following. Now to determine a random number. For this, we use random.range. Add the following. The format may look strange, but don't worry, you'll learn about it soon enough. All that matters is that you are getting a number between 1 and 10. Scroll down to check guess. Let's write our if statement. Notice we indented our text inside the braces. This makes it easier to discern the contents of a block. Okay, now for the wrong guesses. Now for too low. In this case, we'll use a simple else. And that's our logic. Now let's create a new variable in our if block, just for testing purposes. Now let's try to access the myGuess variable outside the if block. You'll notice we get an error. If you hover over the red squiggle, you'll see a message that reads, myGuess does not exist in the current context. What does that even mean? What you've just experienced is known as variable scope. When you create a variable, it exists in a given scope. Take this example. Here we have two variables, the name and points. Points are defined in a pair of curly braces inside of an if statement. This is known as block scope. Since the variable was defined in that scope, it can't be accessed outside of the scope. Now let's change the player's name. A variable defined outside of the current scope can still be used inside of that scope. Here's a series of nested if statements. Here we have three if statements defining three levels of scope. 
any child can access a variable in the parent scope. This means that the isChild and isGrandchild scope can access the x variable, but the parent scope can't access any variables defined in the child and grandchild scope, nor can the child access any variables in the grandchild scope. Also, code outside of the if statement can't access any variables inside of the is parent scope and downwards. So if both the child and parent scope needed to access the z variable, you would move the dec relation up to the top. Now all scope levels can access the z variable. Mind you, code outside of this entire if block can't access the z variable. So if you wanted the z variable to be accessed everywhere, you would move it outside of the if block entirely. Back to our code. We can now see that the error is from us accessing a variable outside of its scope. Let's delete the line and now everything works. Now let's test our game. We'll start the game and you'll notice that we can see the random number. This is good for testing. Okay, let's take this for a spin. Let's guess high. Now let's guess slow. And now for the correct guess. Awesome, it works great, nice work. At this point, you are ready for a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to make sure the user can only provide numbers from one to 10. If they put in a number that's too low or a number that's too high, print a message that reads, provide a number from one to 10. Pause the video now and give it a shot. You got this. How is your challenge? Don't worry if you didn't get it. The more you write code, the easier this will become. You just have to practice. And most importantly, you have to be patient with yourself. To get started, we're going to wrap our if block with another if block. Being that we have one if block containing another if block, we should indent the code over. An easy way to do this is to select the code block and then press the tab key. If we want to decrease the indent, select the code again and press shift tab. For now, keep it indented. Now for the logic. As you can see, if the guess is greater than zero or less than 11, then the guess will be evaluated. Otherwise, they are told to guess again. Let's save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. First, let's start by guessing one. That's too low. Now let's guess zero. We get the message to provide between one to 10. Next, guess five. and we are too high. Now try 11. Again, we get the correct message displayed. Finally, guess the correct number. Well done. 